Good morning. Welcome to NTI week two, lesson day six for Tuesday, March 31st, 2020. Um, this is the lesson that you're going to want to listen to after you read chapter five, which I'll make note of in the comments too. Um, but I want to make sure that you read it on your own first so we can talk about it. And if you're like, what's Miss Guthier doing? Maybe sitting on my lap. And she's sleeping. Um, when I said good morning, she looked up at me like, are you serious? Is that really how you greet your students? They're probably so annoyed. Um, she literally, if dogs could roll their eyes, she just rolled her eyes at me. Um, so anyway, hope you had a wonderful Monday. Uh, today, what we'll be looking at, again, you want to have read chapters four and five before you watch this video. Um, we're gonna spotlight, I'll make sure I clarify anything from chapter four you might still wanna know. Um, and then I'm gonna do uh, a close reading of an important part of chapter five. Let's see here, what else? Um, lesson day six is brought to you by Instagram dog of the day. You will find her at Nessie McNubs, that is N-E-S-S-I-E -S 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 -E underscore M-C-N-U-B-B-S. Nessie McNubs was requested, uh, shout out to Hallie, and I did not know about Nessie. I am obsessed with her. Nessie is a little chihuahua baby angel who doesn't have front legs but she has a best friend and she has a wonderful life and look at her hanging out in the grass, standing up like a little person. Look at her, that sweet angel. So if you need a smile in the face of adversity today, there you have it. So let's see here. What we've got first is anything from chapter four that we might um, want to go over. Um, I know that I know that I talked a lot about chapter four yesterday, but one thing that I want you to pay attention to that I forgot and something that might clarify the important parts of chapter four a little bit would be uh, the conflicts that are arising for Scout and Gem namely and a little bit of Dill too. Remember that conflict is just any sort of unrest that's going to propel some tension in the plot. So Jem, we've got as sort of our alpha of the group, and he is going to be calling the shots all the time. He wants to play the Radley game. He thinks it's fine. And we're going to notice, though, that he's going to be struggling with a couple. He's going to be acting kind of weird. Sorry, I feel like you probably want to see the memes. Um, he's going to be acting kind of weird in the next few chapters. Um, kind of evasive, uh, overly emotional seemingly. Um, so I want you to, to kind of zone in about what that could be. Um, we also have Scout conflicted in a way. Um, and these are going to be more internal conflicts for both of them. Scout's going to be in, uh, conflicted about playing the Boo Radley game and just bothering the Radleys in general. She's going to be the one that is constantly like, I don't know if we should do this. And what do Scout or what do Jem and Dill always call her in a derogatory way when she says she doesn't want to play? Somebody would raise their hand and say, a girl. You're totally right. Thank you so much. They use the word girl um, as a jab. Um, if you're afraid or you're being a baby, you're being a girl. And so, so Scout is sort of already feeling left out because every time she's afraid, they call her a girl. And so that kind of, it complicates the conflict she already has about playing the Boo Rally game. Number one, she doesn't want to play it. And she doesn't want to mention to the boys why yet. And number two, if she does mention, they're going to make fun of her and call her a girl. And that's something that she does not take as a compliment. Um, so that's kind of our main part of chapter four that I know I didn't mention yesterday, but chapter five is going to open and really spotlight Miss Maudie, who we haven't really heard from yet. Miss Maudie is, um, one of the old ladies in the neighborhood. Make most people are old. Uh, the scout 
and Jem and Wendell's around in the summer are really the only kids in like the make home city look or like the town limits. Um, there are obviously like school kids that, that will come in and out, but those are the main ones that live on their street. So once the boys start leaving Scout out and saying she's a girl, um, Scout's got to find somebody else to hang out with. And she chooses Miss Maudie, who um, lives uh, on the street. You'll notice uh, soon, and I'll preface it now, that I already told you that To Kill a Mockingbird is two parts. Part one focuses more on their childhood. Part two focuses more on a trial that we know nothing about at this point. Um, the book is also organized kind of using um, vignettes. Vignettes are going to be like almost like mini stories. Like each chapter almost has like one major, like if, if you forgot to read a chapter and you walk into class, you're like, hey, what was chapter four about? Chances are someone could be like, this happens and this happens. And that's kind of how the chapters are organized. The other way they use vignettes in To Kill a Mockingbird is they're going to spotlight different characters in each chapter. And chapter five is a Miss Maudie uh, chapter. So Scout's hanging out with Miss Maudie. Miss Maudie loves to be outside. She loves her garden. She's also a really good baker. So, um, and all, side note, she also has fake teeth right here that Scout always has her pop out. And she's like, oh, I hope I get a pair someday. And so Miss Maudie and her are sitting on the porch. You know Scout cannot avoid asking the, the burning question, do you think Boo Riley's still alive? And Miss Maudie's like, what a morbid question. And she says he's still alive because he hasn't been carried out yet. Um, and that conversation kind of leads to another conversation. And it's one of the most, I would say, one of the most important uh, sections in the novel, quote-wise. And so I want you to, to follow along with me for that Um I want you to get to 49 for me, middle of 49. Okay, so middle of 49. Um, actually, I'm sorry. Let's, hold on. Yeah, middle of 49. We've got Miss Maudie trying to explain the Radleys to Scout. And this part you might have read and been like, I don't know what they're trying to say at all. So I'm here to help you. If you get to the part that says Miss Maudie settled her bridge work and she popped her teeth back in. Miss Maudie settled her bridge work. You know old Mr. Radley was a foot washing Baptist. That's what you are, ain't it? My shell's not that hard, child. I'm just a Baptist. Do y'all believe in foot washing? We do. At home. In the bathtub. Explanation number one. As um, you guys are probably, I know that everybody kind of has a different experience with religion, but what we want to think about is that in almost every religion, there are different, um, like there's a kind of religion is kind of on a spectrum where there are different levels of strictness, where there are maybe some very, very strict Christians, very, very strict Muslims, very, very strict Baptists, and then people who kind of um, are less so. And so uh, a foot washing Baptist, if, if you know anything uh, about biblical allusion, foot washing is, is very uh, prominent in the Bible. It's going to signify like washing away of sins and that sort of thing. So with Miss Motti calling old Mr. Radley a foot washing Baptist, that's going to indicate he's probably going to be someone who's pretty strict. He's going to take um, every line of the Bible to be... Um, literal and and what to follow and then scout's like well you're a baptist too and she says my shell's not that hard meaning i'm not as strict as he is scout doesn't understand the foot washing illusion from the bible she thinks someone's actually talking about like if you're a baptist you have to wash your feet a certain way and so then she asks miss Maudie, well don't you wash your feet miss Maudie's like yeah in the bathtub and so we're already seeing that scout's probably not going to pick up as much as you guys would as smart uh freshmen but just to kind of explain that exchange. But we can't have communion with you all. Apparently deciding it was easy to, easier to define primitive baptistry than closed communion, Miss Maudie said. Foot washers believe anything that's pleasure is a sin. Did you know some of them came out of the woods one Saturday and passed by this place and told me that me and my flowers were going to hell? Your flowers too? Yes, ma'am. They'd burn right with me. 
they thought I spent too much time in God's outdoors and not enough time in, inside the house reading the Bible. My confidence in pul pulpit gospel lessened at the vision of Miss Maudie stewing forever in various Protestant hells. True enough, she had an acid tongue in her head and she did not go about the neighborhood doing good as Miss Stephanie Crawford. But while no one with a grain of sense trusted Miss Stephanie, Jem and I had considerable faith in Miss Maudie. She had never told on us, had never played cat and mouse with us. She was not at all interested in our private lives. She was our friend. How so reasonable a creature could live in peril of everlasting torment was incomprehensible. So Scout here is like, wait, Miss Maudie, she's a good person. How can Miss Maudie go to hell? And this is going to be Scout really conflicted and, and confused about religion. If, if someone is saying that a person like Miss Maudie goes to hell, um, she, she like can't, she can't, um, she can't comprehend that. That ain't right, Miss Maudie. You're the best lady I know. Miss Maudie grinned. Thank you, ma'am. Thing is, foot washers think women are a sin by definition. They take the Bible literally, you know. Is that why Mr. Arthur stays in the house to keep away from the women? The women? I have no idea. Doesn't make sense to me. Looks like if Mr. Arthur was hankering after heaven, he'd come out on the porch at least. Atticus said, God's loving folks like you love yourself. Miss Maudie stopped rocking and her voice hardened. You're too young to understand it, she said. But sometimes the Bible in, in the hand of one man is worse than a whiskey bottle in the hand of, oh, your father. I was shocked. Atticus doesn't drink whiskey, I said. He never drank a drop in his life. No, he did. He said he drank some one time and didn't like it. Miss Maudie laughed. Wasn't talking about your father, she said. What I meant was, if Atticus Finch drank until he was drunk, he wouldn't be as hard as some men who are at their best. There are just some kind of men who are so worried, so busy worrying about the next world, they've never never learned to live in this one. And you can look down the street and see the results. Okay, and this is a part that I'm also like super sad we're not in class for because we always have an awesome conversation about these lines. And so I'm going to kind of try to walk you through what I would have done. And then maybe I'll do more of the talking than you guys would usually. So we've got this analogy of the Bible in the hand of one person is as dangerous as a whiskey bottle in the hand of the other. So we want to start with a whiskey bottle or just like liquor in general. Um, liquor when it's you're legally 21 and, you know, it's it's. Well, I guess I'm repetitive to say it's legal for you to drink it. Um, it you'll see it at parties. You'll see it. I mean, there's a reason it's called happy hour. Um, people, a lot of times during like celebrations or when people are having fun, alcohol is present. And so it's something that people use for recreation when used safely. Now, the next thing I would ask is, but when can alcohol become a problem? And all of you smart people would raise your hand and say, addiction, doing something that you normally wouldn't, um, making a, a regretful choice, putting yourself in danger, getting behind a car, hurting someone, hurting someone, or hurting yourself. And I would say, yes, 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 all of those things. And I would say, okay, let's look at the Bible. Okay, a lot of people use the Bible for when they need to seek comfort or direction in their life or spiritual assistance. Um, the Bible is something that, that people use for, um, for good. Now, then I would ask, when can the Bible be used for bad? And this one, I'd, I'd have to like tie myself on the clock because I'd want to jump in quicker than, than I should. And so I'm going to have you guys think about that for a minute. And so hopefully um, you were able to maybe come up with the fact that like while the Bible or any other religious text uh, is rooted in love, that the Bible has also been used uh, to perpetuate hate. Um, you know, I'm sure all of you have probably seen those signs of people like, um, about like God saying you're going to hell. What is the, the one of the, the East, sorry, the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, they're the ones who um, have like God hates insert group that this church has deemed hateable. Um, and I mean, I'm sure that you can think about other um, religious organizations that use their religion not for good. 
Um, I mean, one other example is that the Bible was used in the uh, in the 1800s to justify why slavery uh, was okay. And so, um, what I'm hoping that you're gleaning from this analogy of whiskey, a whiskey bottle, and a Bible book, is that both of those things are only as dangerous as the person that is holding it. And so Miss Mahdi says Atticus could drink until he couldn't walk or see or do anything, and he still wouldn't be uh, the type of man or wouldn't be hateful like someone who might just have one drink and, and become um, a nasty person. Um, and so hopefully that helped to clarify that. It's a really important quote. And if I was the teacher, I'd probably put it on the quiz. That was actually a really cool wink. I'm not a very good winker most of the time. Um, anyway, if you can uh, let me know if I didn't explain that well enough, I would be happy uh, to chat with you in the comments. Um, but otherwise, I hope that this helped you in your navigation of Chapter 5. I hope to see you again tomorrow. As always, I love you, I miss you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.